well for the girls, okay? You're having way too much fun today. Okay, good morning. And welcome to your boardroom. This is uh, February 15th. It is the Board of Supervisors Ventura County meeting. And we welcome you, and we will start with a uh, uh, roll call, please. Supervisor Bennett? Here. Supervisor Parks? Here. Supervisor Michaels? Here. Supervisor Flynn? Yes. Supervisor Long? Yes, thank you. And I'd like to invite at this time our wonderful Harriet Weigel from our Disabilities Ministry is going to provide us with an affirmation. Good morning, Good morning, and thank you so much for letting me come back again. I told you the last time that I was here that you're my heroes. You are, but I have another hero. Okay. We all need to have heroes in our lives, people that aren't afraid to step forward and make a difference, eager to serve the community they live in, ready to accept challenges and responsibilities. Refugio. Garcia, Jr., a long-term resident of Ventura, is one of them. He's a hero. Ray was in law enforcement for more than 32 years, an excellent officer. He wore his badge. It didn't wear him. After he retired from the Sheriff's Department, he went right back to it, this time as a volunteer. Ray feels that he's being recycled. He wants to share what he has learned from his life, from his experiences, and he does. And he does it in a positive way. Countless families have been touched by his generosity. Cadets at the Sheriff's Academy have learned the importance of cultural diversity and the dangers of ro racial profiling from him. Ventura County is a better place because of Ray. It would have been easier to stay at home, but Ray is like you, dedicated. Last December, there was a medical crisis, and Ray slipped into a coma. He is currently in a local hospital, still in a coma. His wife, Georgia, and their eight children stand at his side, waiting. They've been waiting for many weeks, waiting for his eyes to open for Ray to wake up. I told Georgia that I would be here with you this morning, and I asked her, what, what would Ray say to you if you were standing here? If Ray was at my side, what would he tell the supervisors? And Georgia's reply was, live each moment of each day as if it were your last. Treasure it. Examine your personal strengths and weaknesses, and as you grow in character, Hold out your hand to others. Help them stand tall with you. If you identify a community need, do something about it. There is so much right in front of you, so much to be done. Search your souls and become the person that God intended you to be. It has nothing to do with denomination. It has everything to do with what you believe and how you believe. Please join me in a short prayer, if you so desire. Lord, we thank you for the moments you give us, for the opportunity to do what needs to be done, the wisdom to do it correctly, and the dedication to see it through to completion. Help the Board of Supervisors combine their talents, increase their vision, Allow them to see what Ray is dreaming about. Help them build a county where all men, women, and children are equal. A county where the citizens stand tall, shoulder to shoulder, people of purpose united with a common goal. Building a place where dreams come true, moment by moment. Shalom. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you for being our heroes. Thank you. Supervisor Bennett, would you lead us in the pledge? Hand over heart, please. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There's been there's been a motion and a second to uh, receive and file the minutes of February Tuesday, February eighth, and seeing no objection, that's so order. Agenda review, Mr. CEO. Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, we just have a few uh, minor corrections and uh, a request. Uh, item 38, you should have received a uh, revised letter with attachments on that. Uh, item 40 will require a four-fifths vote. Wait a minute now. I'm still turning pages. Okay, 38 revised. Okay. Okay, and item 40 requires a four-fifths vote. The addendum item 45 uh, is an addition to your closed session for anticipated litigation. And uh, I'm requesting that items 39 through 43 be heard immediately following items 1 through 9 so that the public works people can go back to work on the emergencies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did you say about 45? Uh, that's an addendum to your closed session uh, for anticipated litigation. Okay. Um, no further agenda review. Board members, any comments on agenda review? I move the recommended uh, uh, changes to the agenda. Second. Motion is second. Any objection to that? Seeing none, so ordered. All right. At this time, our consent items are items 10 through 16, and I don't have any comments requested to be made on consent. Um, so it's before the board. Move the approval. agendas. Motion and a second. Any objection to that motion? Seeing none, so ordered. At this time, we will do our public comment time. Uh, citizens' um, presentations regarding county-related matters not appearing on the agenda and guidelines are so noted in the agenda packet. And I will call up first for public comment, Carol Dean Williams. Uh, good morning, Carol Dean Williams, a 59-year resident of Ventura County. It's honeymoon, it's Valentine's, it's the whole month of January. And one person comes to this meeting every Tuesday with very little recognition. So this is in recognition of our elected auditor controller. <clears throat> Love's presence here is anything sweeter than honey sweet. I heard Christine say, yes, honeymoon treats. Is anything sweeter than honey love? Did I hear Christine say, kisses, twinkling stars above? Is anything fuller than the full moon? Christine said, my heart with hubby at high noon. Dip a tip a finger into the honey jar. Kisses, kisses, pointing pole star. Kisses, kisses, sweetest to the lips. Did I hear Christine say, honeymoon, that's a trip. Is anything greater than honey love? I heard Christine say, say, yes, lips fitting like gloves. Is anything sweeter than honey sweet? I heard Christine say, yes, honeymoon sweet. Oh, Valentine's Day, just love in the air. I found a true hero. <clears throat> It's 1645 A.D. It's not Paul Bunyan. It's John Bunyan. Under California law, when you're arrested and booked, they, the Sheriff's Department has three hours to take you to a telephone for a telephone call. Poor John Bunyan wasn't as lucky. The Church of England, and by the way, I'm a confirmed Episcopalian. And by the way, after John Bunyan had laid in prison about seven weeks, the jailer called him forth 
for the bill of indictment that John Bunyan of the town of Bedford, laborer, being a person of such and such condition, he has devilishly and precariously abstained from coming to church to hear divine service. He spent 14 years in prison in England because he wouldn't come to divine service. If you want to look it up on the web page, it's acacia, A-C-A-C-I-A, dot pair dot com. John Bunyan, read this. <clears throat> Bunyan, I said that as to the first part of it, I was a common frequenter of the church of God and was also by grace a member with the people over whom Christ is the head. The judge, but says just killing, do you come to church? You know what I mean, to the parish church, to hear divine service. Bunyan, I answered, no, I did not. The judge, he asked me, why? I said, because I did not find it commanded in the word of God. The judge, he said, we were commanded to pray. Bunyan, I said, but not by the common prayer book. The judge, he said, how then? Bunyan said, with the spirit, as the apostle said, I will pray with the spirit and with the understanding. Well, my time is valuable, and I've got to give a little bit of loving to the corrupt district attorney and the corrupt sheriff. Corrupt D.A. M.D. Bradbury, drunken with power, Lady Justice, eyes blurry. Corrupt D.A. G.D. Totten sues the board, the supervisor's board, fill his Mr. mouth Williams, with your time is up. Thank you. cotton. Thank you. Christy Madden. Good morning. My name is Christy Madden with the County Executive Office and President of the Ventura County Management Council. I'm just here to uh, let everyone know that the time has come for the corporate games once again. And you will see posters like this going up around the county. And up here in the corner, you'll see the web address where you can go to register for the games. Once again, the Management Council has fronted the registration fees for all county employees to participate. Uh, this year, we have paid a little bit of an extra fee, and by doing so, we have access to an unlimited number of teams in all of the events for the games this year. Last year, we had to do playoffs to determine who actually got to compete in the games. We have some very popular uh, uh, events in the games. Last year, we had enough teams interested in bowling, I think, to form 13 teams or something, and we could only have three enter. So... This hopefully will open the door for all employees to participate. There's a couple of new events this year that the city has added. We're going to have intertube water polo. Um, <laughs> that will be uh, hopefully at the city's new facility just up the street here. They're um, going to be having Texas Hold'em and the table games. And um, we... The kickoff for the corporate games occurs on April 13th, and the games run through May 14th. They take place evenings, after hours, and on weekends. I'd like to invite any interested county employees to come to an organizing meeting if you're interested in helping to facilitate putting the games together. We need event coordinators, people to pull together our cheering section, and to help facilitate the closing ceremonies that is always a really good time out on the beach on May 14th. Uh, so with that, I encourage everyone to come and participate. The games are a lot of fun. It's a great opportunity to meet people from different agencies and departments and throughout the county. Take any questions. 
Comment? Uh, not a question, just um, uh, just recognition and appreciation for you uh, having your, th this enthusiasm and going after this thing. This is on top of your, your quote, regular job, right, that you're out there doing and stuff. So really appreciate that. And um, want to echo um, uh, Christy Madden's request that people step forward if there are people that are out there listening to this, that uh, the corporate games only work because there's a sense of teamwork out there, and she's going to need a lot of people to step forward to help with all of, all of this. And so, yeah. encourage you to do that. And Thanks if anybody a lot. needs any enticing, the meeting is today at noon up in the county executive office. And for those who volunteer, there's free pizza. Oh, that works. <laughs> Thank you. All right, great. Thank, Thank you. you for doing all that. It's it is fun. I can't believe it's already rolled around again another year. Oh. Thanks, Christy. Um, Gloria Romaine. Roman. Good morning. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gloria Roman, uh, and I live in Oxnard. Um, I'm also a member of Mujeres, uh, uh, Mujeres is an acronym for Mujeres Unidas para la Justicia, Educación y Respeto, Women for Justice, Education, and Respect. Uh, I would like to share with you uh, this morning my personal experience uh, related to the cost of health care. I'm fortunate enough to have health uh, insurance, but it's too costly. It has gone up. The premium has gone up. Um, I pay over, over $300 just for myself a month. Uh, the premium has gone up uh, every year. The copayment has increased also. The way it's going, I'll be priced out of the health insurance market. I have been fortunate that my health has been good because I practice preventative health. Uh, but I also, but also as I age, the premiums keep increasing, and I, and I won't be able to afford it when I do need it. So uh, the community needs you today. Uh, we are asking that you fund the health care for people uh, that, are, that are less fortunate especially the young, the little ones, and, and the young uh, teenage uh, people. Uh, I think it's only fair that all the citizens of, of this great uh, county have health insurance at least equal of that of the elected officials. Health care insurance should be a right, not a privilege. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay, that concludes the public comments that have been submitted. At this time, we will go to board comments, and I'm going to take a little exercise, a little chair roll here, if I might. Um, ask the board's indulgence. I'm sure you will agree in the participation and celebration of providing a 30-year service award certificate to Cal Remington, who is our wonderful leader at the... Um, probation agency for the venture for venture county and a little bit on cal's 30 years of service i'll try to cover them quickly 30 years long time cal um, joined us in 1973 assigned to the unified corrections project as a parole agent with the california youth authority in 74 he was hired by the county as a deputy probation officer and continued working with the ucp program his responsibilities were certainly research, planning, grants, and coordinating training programs in leadership styles and managing change. In 76, he promoted to senior deputy probation officer, and he assumed the administration responsibilities and supervised development of a unique probation supervision unit called Community Resource Management Team. And in 1977, he was promoted to supervising deputy probation officer, and he stayed at UCP. He continued with his admin responsibilities, research and planning, and oversaw the closing of the UCP program. In 1978, he was reassigned to administration responsible for agency research, planning, and program evaluation and the development of the criminal justice information system for the agency. In 78, he, uh, under Prop 13, he took a little step back, but he, he worked with um, adult investigation programs. And then he moved on as facility manager of the Juvenile Restri Restitution Project, where he wore the federal, wrote the federal grant to start the JRP, which um, developed the program and hired the staff. 
In 81, he was reassigned to the Clifton Tatum Center at the Juvenile Hall. In 85, reassigned to administration and served again as manager of the Field Services Division. And in 91, is reassigned as manager of the Court Services Division. And in 93, he was promoted to deputy director of the agency. In 1997, appointed to the director, chief probation officer of the agency. As chief, he changed the name of the agency from the Correction Services Agency, I remember that, to the probation agency. Um, armed two intensive supervision units, facilitated staff getting safety retirement, obtained a grant to help build the Juvenile Justice Center, and received numerous grants to enhance services and, and opening the juvenile facilities. He has served as president of the California Probation, Parole, and Corrections Association. He has served as vice president and president of the chief probation officers of California. And he was appointed by Governor Schwarzenegger to serve on the Board of Corrections and was also appointed to the Juvenile Justice Accountability Project Task Force. And he was chair of the Disproportionate Minority Contact Work Group and was invited to be a part of the California Corrections at the Crossroads Summit meeting organized by the National Council on Crime and Delinquency. Served on the Collaborative Justice Courts Advisory Committee for the Ju Judicial Council of California and on a statewide level helped secure TANF funding during our many, many tight budget years. So as you can see over the 30 years he has been busy, productive. Um, productive is really just, uh, not, doesn't cover enough of what Cal has done for us in this county in both his service to the probation agency, his um, leadership style in uh, bringing a team along with him that really gets the job done and does so with the highest integrity and discipline and responsibility to the public that's served. Um, his 30 years of service has been because he, he loves this community and, and I believe the probation agency is, is a priority. When he was, as you probably recall, sworn in in this boardroom in 1997, his priority to a probation agency and his pride of taking the leadership role was, was very evident to the point that he forgot to introduce his wife. So he hasn't lived that one down yet. So I have a plaque to present um, for 30 years of service to Calvin Remington, an expression of appreciation for loyal and faithful service to the citizens of the County of Ventura, wishing him continued success in his career of public service. It's presented to him, and it's also signed by him. But that's still <laughs> it's a beautiful plaque. <laughs> but I'd like to step down and present this to Cal, and I'm sure that the board members would like to add some comments. We've been trying to get him to do this, and he's been avoiding it, so that's why we brought him into the boardroom. <laughs> <laughs> Just briefly, and, and thank you so much, <clears throat> Chair Long. And thank, uh, I'd like to thank all the board members. I, I can see in um, Supervisor Park's eyes that she's wondering, now was I... Did I graduate from, from elementary school 30 years ago? And <laughs> Super Flint, Supervisor Flynn, on the other hand, is saying he's just hitting his stride. So, you know, it's all relative. But I, I, I have enjoyed these 30 years. Um, uh, I appreciate all the, the, uh, the kind comments. I think uh, we have seen success in the, in the uh, probation agency. And, and uh, I think that um, uh, probably one of my strengths is... Um, uh, is having good people around me and uh, uh, letting those people do the job and, and um, 
sometimes I get the credit for that, but uh, I certainly want to thank all my staff, and uh, many are here today. So, so uh, Supervisor Long, thank you, thank you, board members, thank you, Mr. Johnston, and, and uh, thank all of the uh, staff of the Ventura County Probation Agency. Thank you. Thank you, Cal. I would like to add one thing to the long list of things, uh, the nice things that can be said about Cal. No, not your golf. <laughs> uh, that those of us uh, who have gray hair or no hair at all, in my case, uh, at least not in the right places anymore, uh, the uh, thing that we learn is that you can design systems, you can build organizations, you can adopt laws. But ultimately, it gets down to trust. And the organizations that run best uh, are organizations that are run by people that you can have implicit trust in. And Mr. Remington represents that group of people where you can do business with the shake of a hand and he keeps his word. And that make such a huge difference, particularly in difficult times, because there is no way to reduce everything to writing, to agreements, and to laws, and yet, you know, the business of government needs to go on, and so, Cal, I really appreciate working with a person of your integrity. Well said. Well said. Madam Chair. Sure. Supervisor yeah. Michael. Um, it's rare that we have somebody um, in the position that Cal's in who has the type of sense of humor that Cal has. It has been such an extreme pleasure working on some very difficult projects. But, you know, it seems like when the going gets tough, you know, the tough learn how to laugh. And we've had to do that a couple of times. Um, it's been such a pleasure working with Cal and, and watching his staff and the respect that they have for Cal. And that translates back to a, an incredibly effective staff. The probation agency needs to be really proud of the people, like all of our departments. Um, but I believe that it's Cal's leadership through a sense of humor and a firm hand when it's needed that has helped make this agency what it is. And we are the pride of California. You know, we are very, very well respected up and down this state, and it has to do with Cal's leadership and the quality of personnel. And so what are you going to do your next 30 years? <laughs> you can't leave till I do. Uh, but at any rate, thank you, Cal. Uh, thanks for 30 years of really awesome service and, and for the staff that you've trained behind you. You guys do great work. Supervisor Bennett. Uh, I, I just want to, want to offer that um, I think that Mr. Remington's uh, 30 years of experience represents um, the, the kind of institutional memory we have in many of, uh, of our department heads and managers uh, here and how valuable it is for the county to have people that have that institutional memory. You've used it well on behalf of the county and it reminds me that we have to start paying attention to what are we going to do as this institutional memory starts to go out the door. So thank you for, for using it so well. But not too soon. Supervisor Flynn. Hello, Cal. One thing I like about Cal is when I ask him for a meeting and I express an idea to him, he never rejects it. He always thinks in a positive way. He may not implement it, but he always thinks in, in a very, very positive way. He's got a soft heart for those children that get up in uh, juvenile problems, juvenile delinquency. Um, he identifies with them, and uh, he's such a wonderful person. Have you ever met with him when he wasn't smiling? When he comes into a meeting, he's smiling. He's a positive guy. He's a role model. He's a person that we're all proud to be affiliated with. And then you've got all of your uh, supporters back there, the staff, and they're uh, super, too. I've worked with some of them quite a bit. And uh, they're very supportive of Cal. Cal is their leader, and he's their role model. He sets the tone of the agency, and I thank you for all of that. Supervisor Park. I would just like to say that you are a rare individual, Cal, and uh, that's true. The 
You always do have that smile, and I think that uh, the county's lucky to have you, and I think your employees are lucky to have you as their boss, and I, I think that's, that's rare when you can have uh, so much appreciation uh, for the good work you do, but a lot of it's your management style, and that really reflects the person you are, and we very much appreciate you being here. And we thank you and your entire team that works with you. That outstanding job for the public of Ventura County. Thank you. And your family. <laughs> and, and your wife. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Is that your wife? Does she agree? That's not his wife. <laughs> no. Second only two. Okay. That's, that's uh, my secretary. Did you who, hand him uh, that box? Uh, <laughs> Thanks. That role very nicely at times. Second only two. <laughs> well, I was going to ask her if she agreed with all the comments. And board members, I'll wrap up my comments. Just a uh, journey memory of two folks. One, I'd like to just call out in Piru. Pa Piru is such a small but mighty community, and when we lose someone in the community, it, it makes such a big difference because they're usually... Um, people have been very active and supportive of Piru, and Tilly Alcantar is one of those, and she will be missed. Supervisor Parks, board comments. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, comment about a, a tragedy we had over the weekend. Actually, a couple out on Santa Rosa Road, we had uh, two accidents, uh, one uh, where a horse was hit and killed as well as the um, driver, and uh, another uh, incident where there was a head-on collision. There was also, a, I know, a letter to the editor recently, you know, that kind of accused the supervisors of creating the problem because of allowing all the development to occur. But indeed, uh, the, the development is occurring in the cities, and I think that just really shows that we need to work well with the cities out there to assure that when they do increase development, which increases traffic on the county roads, that we do make sure that there's proper mitigation so that we are able to handle the amount of traffic that those cities create. Uh, I'd also like the board to close in memory of the people on this list. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Flynn. So if the board would adjourn in memory of the people on this list, I'll give it to the clerk for the record. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Bennett. I'd like to ask the board to adjourn in memory of uh, the people on this list also. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Michaels. Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to send a, a personal thanks to um, Kathy Jenks and to Gloria Goldman, uh, Sheriff Bob Brooks, uh, and the California Fish and Game personnel, and I apologize to Lieutenant Chris. I can't remember his last name. Um, but <clears throat> last week uh, it appeared that I was poised to play Sheena of the Jungle in my district. Uh, we had an incident with 22 exotic cats, and it was not a safe situation. The cats were healthy. They were well taken care of, but the way that they were housed was very unsafe. One lynx, in fact, did escape and was picked up by animal control. Um, but a situation that could have become a circus could have been combative with the property owner and the owner of the cats was handled extremely well. And the, the uh, owners of the cats uh, were told to remove them by 3.15 on Saturday. They did that and the animals have all found shelter in licensed, we hope, licensed facilities. Uh, and I just, I really wanted to thank all of, of the personnel involved because it was a touchy situation for a, a short while and the neighbors were very concerned uh, because the cats were agitating the horses and there's a, an extreme amount of uh, very valuable horse flesh in that valley. And so um, my thanks. They did an, they did an awesome job in, in a very professional way. Uh, also, last week I was not here because I was in Washington at a conference, National Association of Regional Councils, and we spent one whole day um, ending up in tears with a uh, discussion of the president's budget and what he's doing uh, with his initiative for communities. It's going to be um, quite a hit, and I'm sure our staff is already looking into that. NARC did just a basic um, comparison of budgets 
this year's, this coming year's, and the following year, and it's pretty grim. A lot of those programs are going to be zeroed out uh, and with declining um, approaches in between. So the, the picture is not good, and I think that, that I'm sure CSAC and the, and the league and this board at some point in time need to get a briefing on um, exactly what is the president's budget, <clears throat> pardon me, mean to us. Um, you know, in just the social service programs, it's extreme. And then there's also supposedly this year um, the transportation bill will be reauthorized and there's very much concern over how much money will be put into that bill. Uh, and it looks like a lot of things are going to be enabled through appropriations, which really isn't the right way to do it, but they're going to be kept out of the bill for political reasons. Also, the, uh, the uh, bill on aging is up. We don't know if that will get through this year. But all of those are going to mean a lot to our county as far as the, the federal partner. And we, we all know what's going on at the state. So um, <clears throat> it may be in... <clears throat> Pardon me. Maybe in the near future, uh, we could get staff to do an analysis of what these hits are to the county, so that we can then start doing some lobbying. Uh, our lobbyist Tom Walters in in Washington did say, "Now's the time." If there's extreme hits and there's programs that we need to keep or anybody wants to keep, states, et cetera, now's the time to start lobbying those. So just a heads up. Uh, also in there is the Workforce Investment Bill, which is coming back up again. Uh, and there may be some hits to us in that one. Uh, and with that, I would um, ask that the board adjourn in memory of the persons on this list. And I would like to call out just one, and that's Wayne Templeton. Um, Wayne was an extremely active senior and an activist for seniors, many times awarded um, kudos by the, the different senior organizations for all of the work that he did. One of the best things that he did was to begin the Lifeline program which is a communications device for homebound seniors so that should something happen, they don't even pick up the phone. They hit a button on the device and someone can come to their aid. So he will be dearly, dearly missed, and he was active as he wanted to be up to the very end. So thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Your comments on the federal budget are ringing very strongly of concern uh, at CSAC. We had a uh, presentation also on the federal budget, and um, the opening comment on it was that this is the worst federal budget in 20 years for the states, a um, variety of reasons. But um, obviously, I, I agree with you. It would be good for us to be able to have a, a direct um, focus piece on just the federal budget impacts that we could, as a board, I think, reply and send uh, a message out to our federal representatives of issues of concern just on the federal budget. So perhaps we could get some work done on that, Mr. CEO, and with our lobbyists and Sue Hughes. So, Okay. Uh, no further board comments. We'll move to our agenda items, and we have been requested to handle items 39 through 43, so public works folks can get back out doing the good work of recovery on the emergency. 43, 39 is the first one, and that is purchase orders for emergency work on county roads. Good morning, Mr. Coons. Good morning, Chair, <coughs> members of the board, Mr. Johnston. Uh, before the board this morning is an uh, item where we have three purchase orders that exceed $100,000. Uh, the government codes restrict uh, my authority to $100,000, so I'm requesting the board execute these three purchase orders uh, for the work that's uh, being done on the emergencies with the storms that we've experienced. Uh, the three contracts are, are contractors are listed in here, Adobe, Tri-County, and Patriot. And if there's any questions, I'd be pleased to respond. This is uh, work needed, uh, as identified here, for getting our roads open and uh, keeping them open, and uh, work will be ongoing in this regard. Any questions? Move the recommended action. Second. Motion or second. Mm -hmm. Seeing no, no, no objections to item 39, so ordered. Thank you. Item 40, approval of a ground lease between the County of Ventura and Castle of Cook Community Housing, Inc. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Williams. Chair. 
Long members of the board, Mr. Johnson, I'm Steve Williams with Public Works Agency. We're take great pleasure this morning in recommending approval of this ground lease with Castle and Cook Community Housing to lease approximately three and a quarter acres of uh, land owned by the county at the county's Lewis Road complex. This is for develop development of approximately 22,000 square feet of housing for uh, mentally dis disordered persons. The terms of the lease are set forth in the board letter. I would just like to make one comment that uh, over the weekend we did note uh, a need to make some minor revisions to the lease document to correct some s uh, numbering sequencing discrepancies and you have been uh, given, uh, I think Roberta gave you this morning copies of that revised document. So Marty and I, uh, who have been working together on this, are, are available for questions. Are there questions? Happily move approval. Second. It's a motion and a second. This is really amazing. Any objection to the motion? Uh, just the motion uh, is for the revised documents. Correct. 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 Seeing no objection to the motion, just to add a quick comment, it, it is just a magnificent opportunity. Um, this board committed years ago to work hard to develop housing um, for our mentally disabled clients, and this is a significant step in that direction to meet that mission. So, yep, it's a wonderful partnership, and comments? you guys have done it. Very good job. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Marty, and the team. Okay, uh, no objection to that, and the motion passes. We'll move to item 41, which is a report of the use of emergency contract authority by the Director of Public Works, Mr. Coons. Chair, members of the board, Mr. Johnson, Ron Coons, Public Works Director. Uh, once again, before you uh, weekly on uh, the obligations that I have to report to you, the contracts that I've entered into on an emergency basis, I have listed them all within this uh, document. Uh, we're working to uh, get access for emergency vehicles and to the public there so that uh, the uh, roads, uh, so that those services can be provided. If the board should find that any contract that I have entered into uh, would need to be uh, let out for bid and gone through that process, uh, the board can so direct me to do that. I recommend not doing that because of the emergency natures here and uh, because of the lengthy bidding process that you would have to go through. Any questions? I'd be pleased to respond. Questions? Respond. Move the recommended action. Second. So motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Keep, keep doing the good work. Item 42. Chair, members of the board, uh, likewise for the Watershed Protection District, uh, the same type of a report that I've made with the previous one. Questions? I would move approval and, and also, you know, it's this is kind of perfunctory and we're whipping right through it, but I, I would hope that the public would take the opportunity to look at this and see how much damage was done and how hard everybody has been working to try and, and fix that damage, the number of, of contracts that have been let, you know, um, with the emergency proposal um, is amazing and how quickly that it's getting done. And I think everybody owes public works staff and, and all of the employees a big kudo and thank you yeah. for work well done. Absolutely. Was there a motion? That was a motion. I that started motion. it with a motion. Second. <laughs> and a second. And added. An objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Item 43. Chair, members of the board, Mr. Johnston. Item 43 is a uh, report back on emergency contract work for uh, waterworks districts. I have listed those contracts within the document here and have shown uh, the work to keep those, uh, get those emergency repairs done. Same type of report. Move it. Second. <laughs> Move it then, Jean. There's a motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Uh, I have no objection, but just a comment. You, you realize how much extra effort this is on the part of uh, the Public Works Agency, and, and you're not adding any staff to do all this, but to, to have all this kind of oversight is, uh, uh, I know, an incredible increase to the amount of workload that you do have, and I uh, just appreciate you and your staff for the work. I have a great staff. <laughs> Thank you. And the public is appreciative. They are taking note. Um, but I, I certainly have been to community meetings and working on specific issues in my district, and they really do appreciate that your staff is showing up. They're answering tough questions. They're taking some tough comments, but they're holding their own, uh, but more, as importantly, getting out there and doing the job. So thank you so much. Once again, they're spread real thin, so if 
you need a quick answer, just give me a call. I'll be glad to respond. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Now, that completes those um, reordered items that we could take care of so folks could get back out doing the good work that's necessary. Uh, we will now move to our regular agenda, and we are on item 25, the Harbor Department, to authorization to submit an application for grant funds. Good morning, members of the board. Mr. Johnston, I'm here this morning with a simple request for uh, uh, authority to apply for a grant for $91,000 to replace our existing uh, pump-out equipment. This is what's used to pump out the heads on boats. Uh, the point is to offer an opportunity for the highest water quality possible. You'll note in there that in 1997 we stopped charging a quarter per use. Uh, we found that a lot of the machines were down with slugs, tampering, whatever, <laughs> uh, and that we get much higher usage by just making it free and foregoing that $1,000 a year that really doesn't add very much to our income stream. Uh, the, there is no match for this money. Uh, we will continue maintaining as we do now. Uh, the funds come from a special fund that's created by state law from a tax that is on boater fuel. There's a special red dye diesel that is used in boats. There's a tax on that fuel that goes back to these kinds of programs. So we have been notified that we're in good standing for this application and we'd like to replace this equipment this year before state funding also uh, <laughs> goes through its changes. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second. Other questions? Uh, just, questions. J j just one. Uh, you started off your comments by saying you just have a simple request here. I, I didn't know there were any simple requests associated with the harbor. That's that, true. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I misspoke. Question, Supervisor Park. I was just wondering about the uh, type of energy used for the pump out facilities. Is it electric or it gas? It is electric. It is electric? It is electric. It uses a very small amount of electricity. It's a small pump on the order of a sump pump. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There was a motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Thank you. Item 26, uh, Behavioral Health Department ratification approval of the Northrop Grumman Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorders Planning Grant. She's taller than I am. Good morning, Good Mr. morning, Ms. Johnson. Um, this morning, I'm uh, happily here um, to uh, ask you to allow us to receive a grant. We came before your board on December 14th um, to apply for this grant, and we were fortunate to find out a month later that we were one of five um, actual recipients of the grant. This grant will allow us to work in partnership with public health, human services agency, ambulatory care, and the courts so that we can address this important issue, issue of diagnosing and early intervention on fetal alcohol syndrome. And I can answer any questions. Questions? Supervisor Bennett. It's a great grant um, and, and, and really valuable. Um, so many of these kids are suffering from, from this uh, real terrible problem. So congratulations to the staff, and I wish you well on the second phase of uh, the grant application process. Thank you. Other questions? Comments? Move, Move approval. Second. Second. Motion and a second. <laughs> Any objection to the motion? Seeing none. So ordered. Thank you. Item 27, ratification approval of 0405 State Department of Mental Health Performance Agreement. Every year we come before your board with our performance contract from the State Department of Mental Health, and we are here again. It's a ratification because we just got it from them, so we apologize for that, but it does go retro to July 1st, but we moved it forward to your board as soon as we received it from them. This particular contract with the state doesn't have anything to do with our finances. It's strictly our performance contract that we will do the things um, as the mental health plan in the county that are required of us. Um, we actually just recently had our audit by the state for this year according to the plan and did very well. So we're meeting all the terms of the contract and this will allow us to officially go ahead and move into our agreement with them to provide mental health services. Questions? Move approval. <clears throat> motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Item 28, approval of the memorandum of understanding between the county and superintendent schools. 
As your board is aware, um, there is uh, a continuing issue with the funding of these mandatory school uh, services to the children. Um, and through the um, SB 90 mandate process, the county is uh, not quite receiving all of the money that it's owed. But last year, um, the governor uh, reworked it so that the counties would get some portion of the, the IDEA funding. The way that money has to come to the county is through the county schools because they are the only people who can receive this federal IDEA funding. This is this year's MOU with the schools for us to receive the $2.6 million um, that will uh, cover about half of what we expect our cost to be for this year um, in the program. Questions? Yes. Um, yeah, this is, this is really a good program, needed program, but can you go into some detail um, on your third page, uh, the large paragraph there, and just explain it a little bit. Sure. Um, there was a moratorium placed on paying for um, these uh, services through the SB 90 process um, by the state. And at this point, we estimate that the state owes Ventura County approximately $13 million um, of money that you have uh, graciously through general fund dollars continued to give us so that we could continue these services to the youth. Um, in this year's budget, in um, predicting for 0506, the governor is now proposing that the mandate be lifted from the counties and that the mandate go back to the schools and that we only be required in 0506 to provide services to the level of this funding, the $2.6 million, and that it would be incumbent upon the schools to then have to purchase or provide any increased level of service. Um, there will obviously be a lot of conversations that we will all need to have um, as we move forward with that in negotiating with the schools. And um, if it remains that way in the budget, um, then our 5 or $6 million program if your board approves, we would provide the $2.6 million that's funded and work a contract out with the schools, hopefully, for the other two point six or whatever the cost will be for next year. Um, and we'll have to have some decisions and discussions about that. And we wanted to just give everybody kind of the uh, early heads up that that's going to be um, something we need to deal with and at your board's discretion go ahead and move forward with. So motion and second. Any further comments or questions? It is a tough one. It's one of those that just they try and pit us against our good school partners, and, and we really have been able to do over the last couple of years, I think, good work. And I know Supervisor Bennett led some of that dialogue to get the schools to understand we're all in this together, but it's the funding stream has just been horrid. <laughs> there hasn't been one, I guess. Yeah, you asked about questions or comments. I, I, I did. I did want to emphasize that it is, it is um, bittersweet to to do this because we put all that energy into trying to come mm -hmm. up with a collaborative way to not have mm -hmm. us pitted against each other, and now here we are, um, uh, back at that. And it just, uh, uh, I, I have the, f I just have this pervasive feeling that the. Uh, um, the, our budgets are going to be balanced on the backs of the most needy people in our society, and this is mm -hmm. going to be one more example of that. Yeah. Okay. No further comment. There was a motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your work. Uh, item 29, we have ratification approval and agreement with Dr. Charles Thomas for the Medical Director of Inpatient Psychiatric Services. Good morning, Mr. Powers. Good morning, Madam Chair. Board members, Mr. Johnston. How's that? <laughs> right, uh, Mike Powers, Deputy Director, Healthcare Agency. Uh, we're pleased to bring this contract uh, to this morning for Dr. Charles Thomas to serve as medical director of our inpatient psychiatric unit. Uh, the previous medical director left unexpectedly at the end of the year, and Dr. Thomas, who's one of our full time inpatient psychiatrists, agreed to step in and provide that leadership, and he's done a tremendous job. He's well respected, respected by the staff and the, and the patients, and so we're pleased that he's uh, agreed to uh, fill this role for us. We have to answer any questions. Any questions? Move approval. Motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Thank you. Item uh, 30, ratification approval of agreement with California Cardiac Surgeons. <coughs> Madam Chair, Board Members, Mr. Johnston, uh, we're very pleased to bring this agreement to you as well. Uh, this is for all 
cardiothoracic uh, and vascular services at the hospital. That's with the California Cardiac Surgeons. Uh, we previously had provided these services with multiple uh, providers. Uh, one of them uh, resigned at the end of last year unexpectedly, and this group agreed to step in and provide that coverage effective January 1. Uh, they are extremely well respected in the community, and now we'll have our, an increased scope of thoracic and vascular services at the hospital for actually lower cost as well. We have to answer any questions. Questions? This is, this is such a tremendous addition to the um, already fine services that are provided at VCMC, and we're, we should be thrilled mm -hmm. <laughs> with this, that we can now do, provide this service on a more consistent basis. So I would move the item. Thank you. Good work, you. guys. Mm -hmm. It's a motion and a second. Thank you. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Okay, we've got a couple minutes here. Let's do Human Services Agency, Item 31, Ratification Approval of Grant Agreement, Low Income Investment Fund. Good morning, Good Chair morning. Long, members of the board, Mr. Johnston. This item was continued from last week's uh, board agenda and uh, for some additional clarity regarding the fiscal impact. And I've shared some communications with Supervisor Parks and hopefully have provided some clarity along the lines of the questions that she had. But briefly, um, the award is from the um, Low in Income Investment Fund for $168,750 to be administered over a three-year period of time in support of uh, child care planning capacity building in Ventura County. There is a match associated with, with this grant, um, which is about $93,000, and that match is proposed to be supported through existing staff through the Human Service Agency and operating expenses that have already been budgeted for child care activities. Other partners in the collaborative that will be involved in supporting the in-kind match is the Child Care Planning Council, First Five, and the Economic Development Collaborative. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have at this time. Other questions? Supervisor Parks? Uh, no, but I would like to make a motion to approve this and also note uh, in the staff report that at least one new facility, child care facility, will be constructed and providing child care within 36 months. So I really like to, I'll, I'd like to be there for that, and I'm really glad that it does give us that uh, recognized benefit out of this. So I do move the approval. It's a motion and a second. Any? I'm going to oppose the motion. Uh, not that I don't think this is important, but I think we've got some duplication here based on that. It's a motion and a second. Any further objection to the motion? Thanks. Seeing none, it passes 4-1. Thank you. Item 32, um, ratification approval submission of a grant application to the city of Camarillo. We'll take this one, and then we'll move to our 930 time certain. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Shaw. Good morning, board members and Mr. Johnston and, and Chair Long. Um, this morning we are bringing forward a, the uh, rat ratification and approval for submission of grant applications from the City of Camarillo for Homeless and um, Senior Survival Mobile Services and also the ratification and approval for um, funds from the Ventura County Community Foundation for Mudslide Relief. Um, the, both of these uh, the first two programs have been long-standing programs with the county. The Homeless Services Program, as you well know, serves the entire county, and these funds uh, would help in serving those residents of Camarillo, but also uh, help the entire program, Homeless Services Program. The um, <coughs> Senior Survival Mobile serves those people in, from Camarillo who are low-income and unable to find other transportation to medical services, and uh, it's, the services are provided by volunteers who are reimbursed for mileage. The Mudslide uh, Relief Fund is to help a limited number of families who suffered serious um, damage in the flood, recent uh, floods, and it would be to um, relocate some families to replace tools and other things for employment and uh, transportation when cars were damaged. Questions? Approve approval. I'll second it. It's just a drop in the bucket, though, isn't it? Just a few thousand dollars. So. Unfortunately, yes. You know, it's one of those things where it's nice to have something, but it would be nice to have a whole lot more than that to help those. There's well. many people who are 
in need of these services and it's a small amount of money to help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 3500 3, for the mud size, but everything I know will help, <laughs> anything we can get. So thank you. Thanks. Motion and a second. Any further comment, questions? Objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it is now 9.30, and our first 9.30 item is a presentation by Supervisor Bennett. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. This is um, a real pleasure in the midst of uh, a lot of storm damage and a lot of sad news for uh, Ventura County for the last month. Um, we had uh, our boardroom graced uh, a year ago uh, by the um, Ventura High School uh, girls cross country team and um, we are uh, fortunate to have them back again because they have repeated as uh, California state champions in, uh, in cross country. Uh, and so I'd like to um, uh, just uh, read a few things from this resolution before we ask them to come down and um, receive certificates that, that we have for them, but it's uh, going to be more appropriate for me to do that from up here uh, in the dais uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of the information I'd like to read. Um, and um, their names will be uh, read off uh, one more time, but our, the resolution starts with the names of the girls. I'm going to do this uh, one time here. And I wonder whether it's an irony, uh, whether it's an inside joke by Mr. Tokar. I'm not sure, but the first name is, uh, whereas the Ventura High School girls um, cross-country varsity team members, members are Emily Spiker. And was this a volleyballer that somehow got onto the cross-country team? Uh, I'm not sure. But Molly Bailey, Laura Mason, Tara Bryant, Jessica Bryant, Edna Solano, uh, Becky Brinkenhoff, Laura Ricketts, Riley Wagner, Laureen Martinez, Kristen Schaff, Minnie Broccoli Kellner, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, and Angelica Hernandez. And the Ventura High School Girls Cross Country Varsity Team were the 2004-2005 undefeated Channel League champions and have been for seven consecutive seasons. Very impressive. Then the high school uh, cross country team, they were the 2004 and 5 Ventura County team champions. Uh, they were also the, the uh, CIF Southern Section Division I team champions and have been for two consecutive seasons. And they were the girls cross country varsity team, um, broke the Southern Section and all time Mount Sac College course team time record. And they were also the CIF California State Division I team champions and have been now for two consecutive seasons. Um, they uh, broke the uh, Woodward Park course time record and were ranked fourth in the United States of America for the 2004-2005 season. So this is an, an impressive, uh, this is an impressive team. Um, the varsity uh, team captains are Jessica Bryant, Tara Bryant, Ed, Ed, Edna Solano, coaches Bill Tokar and Ken Reeves. I see coach Tokar, I don't see Ken Reeves. Is that right? He's not here an old friend and coach at Nordoff High School with me when I was up at Nordoff High School. Um, the uh, Jessica Bryant was a Channel, I, uh, Channel Individual League champion. Emily Spiker, Laura Martinez, Laura Mason, Riley Wagner, Christine Schaff earned all Channel League honors. Emily Spiker, Jessica Bryant, Molly Bailey, Tara Bryant earned all Ventura County first team honors. Becky Brinkenhoff and Edna Solano earned all Ventura County second team honors. Emily Spiker, Molly Bailey, Jessica Bryant, Tara Bryant earned Southern Section team honors. Emily Spike, Spiker earned all California State team first uh, team honors. Molly Bailey and Laura Mason earned all California State second team honors. And Tara Bryant, Jessica Bryant earned all California State third team honors. This is not a, um, a one or two star team here. If you have that many people earning all state honors and and um, and all of these various honors, a great team effort. And the thing that I'm most proud of uh, after after teaching for over 25 years, Jessica Bryant, Tara Bryant, Emily Spiker, Minnie Broccoli, Kellner earned perfect 4.0 grade point averages while they were doing all of this other extracurricular activities. And overall, the varsity team grade point average was 3.7 uh, during the season. So I'm going to ask Coach Tokar to uh, come down and, so I could present this resolution to him and then ask him to help me pass out resolutions to each one of these uh, fine athletes uh, and academic students that we have here uh, in the audience with us. Coach Tokar.
It's okay to smile, ladies. <laughs> Okay, Tara Bryant. And Jessica Bryant, another senior team captain along with Tara. Tara and Jessica have been with us four years along with Edna, who I'll get to in a minute. But Tara and Jessica have been uh, 4.0, unweighted grade point averages all, all year, all four years in high school. Uh, I believe they're about 4.4, 4.5 weighted, uh, ranked number one and three in their class for at, at the high school. Edna Solano is our other senior team captain. <laughs> Becky Brinkenhoff, the sophomore. Uh, Lauren Ricketts, another sophomore. Angelica Hernandez is a freshman. Molly Bailey, a sophomore. Laura Mason, another sophomore. <laughs> Minnie Broccoli Kellner, another sophomore. <laughs> Riley Wagner, sophomore. <laughs> Lauren Martinez is a junior. Kristen Schaff, the junior. And um, Emily Spiker is home with the flu, but otherwise she would have been here. And the um, C's friend, the old coach, Ken Reeves, is obviously teaching at Nordoff High School. I imagine that's old as in a longtime friend, not particularly <laughs> age-wise. But uh, again, just a wonderful group of young women to work with. Um, it's a pleasure every day to be able to uh, end my day with uh, two to three hours spending with these uh, just fine young people. So thank you very much. Right. We, we'd like to take a, um, a, a quick picture. Uh, we don't have the opportunity to have this much excellence in our uh, boardroom uh, all the time, <laughs> so we'd like to take a picture. I'd also just like, I think you can just see by the tone, uh, Coach Tokar is a remarkable man in terms of his ability to work with these young people and lead them on to excellence. And so congratulations, Coach Tokar, again for uh, uh, bringing a, a fine group of athletes uh, to to this kind of success, both uh, athletically and academically. Right. All right. Yeah. Why don't you come on down, Casey? All right. I think it's going to be one. Well, we kind of gather right Let me here. crunch in there. Crunch in there. They know how to do this. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you for coming here.
Thank you. <coughs> you're all future, actually you're all present role models. Exactly. Thank you so much, Coach. Exactly. And thank you for mentioning royal boys or men's. Uh, we're still trying to get them here. It's a bit of a drive from the other end of the county on a school day, so we're still trying to get them here, but um, we have recognized them, and thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to have the royal boys here at the with same the time yeah. with the girls the day after Valentine's Day just had some, some nice synergy. <laughs> it really <laughs> did, and the royal boys were kind of looking forward to that, but uh -huh. unfortunately they had a, an exam come up and okay. everybody right. missed it. <laughs> I, I also just want to comment what incredible amount of work is involved in a cross-country team. Oh. And I, I had a daughter in her senior year that was at the Westlake High School cross-country team, and these kids had just put everything into it. You know, people are like throwing up at the finish line, you know, in the oh, heat, and just you just can't believe how much work goes into it. Her her essay to get into Berkeley was all about her cross country experience. And you just realize what a huge part of their life is devoted to it, their weekends and all. So, and and it's obvious from the the girls, they're just in great shape and they're beautiful. And I, I know this will help them throughout their lives. So, congratulations. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor Cupid, you're up next. <laughs> Item 18. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this is a um, certainly a bittersweet um, moment for us uh, here uh, on the Board of Supervisors and in the Ojai Valley. Um, I, I want to start the, my, my comments off by saying Saturday I was again uh, trying to work in the Ojai Valley helping out the flood victims. And um, I came drove through Casita Springs uh, just to sort of check on things after working up in uh, Sieti Robles and uh, and there again was were, were the crew the, the the group that we had honored just last week um, on a Saturday uh, pretty dirty pretty muddy it was late in the afternoon uh, and um, there was Jay Paddock again the gentleman in the orange hat back there um, out there working with these young people and, and, and being a great role model. And, and I mention that because um, it, the tie between Tony Alvis and the crew uh, it was, it was so tight, and the crew is such a remarkable organization, and I hope that Tony's parents and his brother who are here, Mr. and Mrs. Alvis and his brother Dan, uh, really appreciate how... Um, how much respect uh, we have for the crew and when the crew comes to us and says that they want to change the name of a trail that was named on behalf of the crew they want to change it to the Tony Alvis Trail. Uh, that's a remarkable comment about Tony. Tony is a, uh, a victim of the La Conchita slide, but was so active uh, with the crew. So I'd like to read this resolution before I come down and ask um, Tony's uh, parents and his brother to come down, and then Wally and uh, uh, Jay, if they would come down also uh, for comments and a picture. But whereas the crew, a nonprofit organization, requested the renaming of the crew trail to the Tony Alvis Trail in honor of Michael Anthony Tony Alvis, who was a leader and packer for the crew. Tony was a leading trail advocate in the Ojai area and led horseback camping expedition into, the Ventur into Ventura County's backcountry. Tony's knowledge of those Padres National Forests served as an incredible asset in times of emergencies for the sheriff's search and rescue. Tony was a spokesman, a guide, and a voice for the forest. His love for the forest and animals was present in his dedication and enthusiasm for his work, and Tony's work with the crew left lasting impressions on the youth he worked with and with our trails and, cre and left our trails increased in better condition. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Ventura County Board of Supervisors takes great pleasure in honoring Tony Alvis' life upon the renaming of the crew trail to the Tony Alvis Trail. And before I come down, I'd like to um, make the motion that uh, we actually um, do make this uh, uh, change from uh, the crew trail to the Tony Alvis Trail as an official board action. Second. It's a motion and a second. No objection to the motion. So ordered. Thank you. And if we could uh, have uh, Mr. and Mrs. Alvis come down and his brother uh, and Wally and Jay, please. Thank you. Yeah, Wally's card is here, so you can add, he'll comment.
Wally, on behalf of the family, Wally will address uh, address us about Tony. Good morning, uh, uh, Chairman Long, uh, Board, uh, uh, CEO uh, Johnson. Uh, thank you, Steve. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Tony was a, a fantastic guy, and mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> a up. And uh, we still miss him. Uh, this is our way of commemorating him. Uh, earlier, when I came in, Cal Remington was here getting a well-deserved award. And the reason I bring that up is because Tal Cal awarded the TANF grant to the crew that was then used to have a whole bunch of juvenile justice kids and at-risk kids build mm -hmm. that trail down at yeah. Foster Park. Uh, the first, I remember we were so surprised after we built the trail that um, 1,200 people used it, and, or mainly from the avenues. And so we thought, what better uh, way to honor Tony, who had, used to come out and bring 20, 16, I remember we had 16, 17 horses and mules out there one day, bring, he used to bring all our food out, and then he'd supervise the kids. Uh, what better way to honor Tony than to name this trail after him, considering it was built by the kids that he served. Uh, he was a legend. Mm -hmm. Anyone who worked with the Forest Service or in trails will tell you that very few people knew the backcountry the way Tony did. But more importantly, I don't think I ever heard him say a negative word. He was a six foot four surfer, big bearded guy, looked like a throwback to the 19th century, and he was. And uh, as I said, he was a surfer and a packer and a mentor for kids and just, uh, a great man. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll finish up by saying that we're going to be dedicating the trail to him Sunday, March 6th, okay. uh, probably around about 12 o'clock down at Foster Park, and anyone who wants to honor his presence, come down. Uh, we understand that his good friend uh, Chang from Tips Restaurant is going to be providing the food that he loved, mm -hmm. uh, so there may be some Thai food there for you as well. So if you're interested in helping pay homage to Tony and help his family, we'd be great pleased to have you down there. And thank you so much for doing this for his mum and dad and brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Would, would you like to capture this naming uh, with a picture? I just, I just want to say I want to thank everybody for being a part of Tony's life. Thank you. This, this, this is a bittersweet moment, um, but the sweetness is there is a trail that we will always have uh, in memory of that, and so I think it would be very appropriate for us to take a picture of, of you. And Casey, if you'll come up and, and help us with this. No, he didn't say what time. Wally, do you, what time do you know on the 6th? Uh, the crew is going in in the morning. We're going to be, the crew itself will be rebuilding part of the trial. We should finish about 12. Lunch from about 12. So around noon. So we figured the dedication ceremony will be around about 1.30 to 2. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I'll be out of town on county business, but I Thank appreciate you. the invitation, and I, I wish you well, and I think this is a great tribute to him. It is. Thank you for your good work. Okay, our next item, a 9.30 time certain, is item 19, and it's our Treasurer, Tax Collector, Public Administrator report. Monthly report. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair. Larry Matheny, your Treasurer, Tax Collector. Uh, I'm pleased to report this uh, uh, This last month we had Treasury earnings of $3 million, uh, adding uh, value above and beyond taxpayer dollars so that we can, uh, we and other local government agencies can carry out our programs. Any questions? Any questions? Again, good work, you and your staff. It, it's amazing that 
even in the, the bad times, it's not as bad as it could have been, and in the good times, it's really good. So it takes talent, and it takes um, sometimes fortitude, it's an and a lot, of, a lot of watching what's going on. So we greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Next Let's month, say. how about six million? <laughs> so receive and file action. Move receive and file. Second. Motion and second. See no objection to the motion. So ordered. Thank you. Our next 930 time certain is a second reading adoption of an ordinance establishing compensation with Board of Supervisors. And this is item 20. And Mr. CEO, there, is there any, anything to update on item 20, the uh, compensation Board of Supervisors ordinance? Any changes? Second reading. Move the recommended action. Second. Motion and a second. Seeing no objection and no public comment submitted on this. Um, any, any objection to the motion? None, so ordered. It takes care of item 20. Okay. Um, shall we move ahead or shall we take a break? Oh, get it finished. No, let's do it. Um, get it finished. Okay. Tony's we, here, so we'd yeah. like to. We have to wait till 10 o'clock. Oh, that's right. We have we, to wait till 10. Well, you we guys have just these, have to chat in the back. We have you know, there's those state laws that some people we know uh, helped move forward, so. We don't want to break those. That require us <laughs> to wait until 10 o'clock. So we'll move to item 33 then, and that's uh, from our CEO, uh, recommendation to appoint the Venture County Employees Retirement Association Board of Retirement. Mr. Johnson. <laughs> You're on. Yes, you have the recommendation. Uh, we, uh, this is your appointment uh, to the Retirement Board. Uh, we have talked with the individual who seems highly motivated and to take on a very important assignment. Move approval. Motion and second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Welcome aboard. I'll have a, a new buddy yeah. <laughs> at the meetings. Item 34, approval to amend Can't the 2005 it. Ventura County Legislative Agenda and Platform. Ms. Hughes, did you hear our earlier brief discussion about the federal budget that we'd like to? Okay. I did. Good. I'm still Thank smiling. <laughs> Morning, Chair Long, members of the board, Mr. Johnston, for the record. My name is Sue Hughes. I'm a legislative analyst for the County of Ventura. I'm before you today with a recommendation that um, you direct CEO Government Affairs to seek state legislation that would allow the Ventura County Watershed Protection District to collect fees that would amend the Ventura County Watershed Protection District Act. Current, under current law, the district has the power to cause taxes and assessments to be levied and collected for purposes of paying any obligation of the district. They do not have the authority to collect fees. Um, amending the act to allow the district to seek voter approval for new property-related fees makes available an avenue for the district to collect additional revenues um, as financial demands are needed for the district. Um, the process for establishing fees would be, um, would have to follow the Proposition 218 regulations. So with that said, I'm here to answer any questions that you have. I brought Mr. Pratt along too, in case you have any specific questions for the district. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Supervisor, who pushed the button? Parks. Go, go ahead, go right ahead. Okay, the <laughs> question I, I'm not completely clear on this because already they have the ability to have assessments for uh, funds for projects of the Flood Control Watershed Protection District. So what are those, quote, certain kinds of services that wouldn't be covered already under the present uh, assessment ability? I'll let Jeff answer more specifically what those are. Uh, this was originally initiated by request from the cities. The cities asked us to go out for a property-related fee in order to pay for their NPDES programs. That's one example of something that we can't cover with an assessment or a tax. So the present avenue that you have, that the county has for assessing property for flood control purposes, does not cover the uh, National Pollution Discharge Elimination System? It can cover that. The, the way Prop 218 works, it defines specific instances for taxes and, and the requisite criteria specific instances for assessments, the requisite criteria, and specific instances for fees and charges and the requisite criteria. The difference between an assessment and a 
fee and charge, as defined by Prop 218, is a weighted vote. The, the reason the city's asked for property-related fee was that it was determined by our consultant, excuse me, that um, an assessment wouldn't pass. Assessments go weighted, fees go one vote, one property. So uh, the question I asked about the uh, what other services aren't covered, um, you mentioned MPDES, but actually that could be covered. <clears throat> Is the intent of this then that um, it will allow for an easier uh, ability to, to get the vote in favor of the projects that the Flood Control Dis Watershed Protection District would be doing? It gives the board another tool in its chest as far as revenue generation. Okay, so it's not really the, the projects per se that are uh, not included in this new system that you want to go to, therefore you need this new system. It's actually the issue of uh, the potential of getting the vote for approval. I'm sorry, I don't understand okay. the question. I, my fr I started this by saying what projects are included in this uh, that aren't already included in the present ability to do assessments. And um, it's, I asked what certain kinds of services can be provided. You mentioned MPDES, but then you also said, though, you could still do MPDES with the current system. Am I to understand that the difference is and why you want to do this is because you don't have to do a weighted average vote. You have a greater potential of getting a yes vote and, and being able to move forward with some projects that you may not otherwise get with the present In system. In a particular instance of MPDES, that's correct. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to have to hold off my vote on this one. Other questions? Um, well, we have a question here. For some. Um, Sorry, yeah, I have, I have a bit of a concern because I was one of those targeted property owners that got a survey recently as to whether or not I would vote for an assessment, uh, a new assessment from the Water Protection District, Watershed Protection District. Um, and Along with the questionnaire, there was some, let's call it campaign material. Uh, and I'm a little concerned that that came before this item came to the board. Uh, I looked at it yesterday and wondered, now what are they up to? Uh, and quite frankly, I filled it out, no, 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 and gave my reasons. So you can read it when you get it back. Um, but I'm, I'm, I was very concerned about the fact that I got that, and I, you know, I asked staff. I said, you know, did I miss, was this on a board meeting that I missed, and it must have been. Um, but I'm, I don't care for the timing, and I also I said this um, on the um, open space district. Uh, <laughs> I I don't like taking a tact that makes it easier to get approval for raising fees from a smaller group of property owners than would be if we did it a different way. And so um, I, I'm not going to support this this morning. Uh, maybe if staff would like to come and talk to me, uh, and I can maybe be convinced, but given the situation of getting the questionnaire first and the fact that the real impetus behind this is to get an easier vote out of property owners. It makes me very discomforted. Uh, the mail, mail ballot system to property owners bothers me anyway because I don't believe it's the right way to do things. It's a majority of those returned. And I've never been comfortable with it. This isn't the first time I've voiced my opinion here on that, and so I won't be in support. Supervisor Bennett. Um, Mr. Pratt, I just want to clarify, our current system allows for the vote, but it is, it's a weighted vote based exactly. on the value of the property, correct? That, the size of the property, size. actually. Yes. It's size. still every property owner votes, right. but um, the large commercial pieces carry a heavier weight than right. the smaller residents. And if we go with the fee set up, everybody will just have one vote. That's correct. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, this was... Uh, uh, generated as a request by the cities to try to help them find a way to finance the new uh, stormwater quality project. That's correct. Program. It came from the public works directors. And I might also add that they the can add their there own. was a survey done about a year ago um, where all of this information became available about the willingness to support. The, uh, the support for property-related fee was about a 58%. Right. The, uh, the assessment for... Uh, 
the assessment support was something just over 50 percent, not considered enough to go over the edge by the pollers. Um, the uh, survey that Supervisor Michaels referred to is just kind of a tracker survey that went out recently, again, in anticipation of potentially um, uh, taking this to the voters in June. And what, um, uh, what will happen to our ability to, to improve, improve storm quality, water quality runoff, storm, storm water runoff water quality uh, if we don't have this fee, if we don't, if we don't have this revenue source? Currently, the uh, estimated need out there is something on the order of $11 million. Um, there's about a $3 million total generated right now by the current benefit assessment. Um, so if um, the cities will continue to dig in their other programs and fall short of their water quality goals if we don't find an alternative uh, funding source for them. So, so, so it, it, it could have an impact in terms of meeting our water quality goals. That's correct, don't. meeting our permit requirements okay. under MPDS. I, I appreciate the discussion we've had so far, and it's like a number of situations we have a philosophical, you know, disagreement about this. But um, certainly, going from a system where it's the size of the parcel down to everybody having uh, the same vote, I, I, I certainly feel like I can make the argument whether it makes it easier or harder. I think it's more egalitarian to have everybody's vote count the same. Uh, and when our uh, partners, the cities, are asking us to help them clean up stormwater quality and that they, they in this era where it is very difficult to generate revenue, uh, I certainly um, um, wholeheartedly support uh, trying to move forward with this. So if Mr. Flynn's still making the motion, I'd still be seconding oh, it. Okay. Got a question. Second like comment. Okay, Supervisor Flynn and then Supervisor Parks. Yes, mm -hmm. Jeff, I appreciate you being here today. I know you don't you don't feel well. Um, can you just for the benefit of the public elaborate a little bit more on how this would be used? This would, storm uh, storm water runoff. Well, uh, assuming that this were to go forward and the state legislature were to approve it, um, we would go out with a, a ballot in June. Um, and ask the voters whether or not they agree to a, a, a charge of, I believe it's $24, and I know it's $24.80 per year um, on each uh, parcel. And based on the outcome, if it were successful, that would generate about $9 million um, for the cities to use for their various MPDS programs. I, I, I really think this is the big issue that we're facing. Uh, and it's going to continue to be one until we get a hold of this uh, runoff and the contamination therein. Supervisor Parks. Um, the question I have, and I also thank you for being here. I know you're not feeling so well. Um, the question I have is why the, um, the procedure would shift, um, would change the weighted vote issue so it's just, as Supervisor Bennett called, more egalitarian in terms of everyone gets one vote no matter how big your parcel is. Does the assessment that would accompany it also be that egalitarian, everyone pays 24, or would it be related to the size of the parcel? That's not clear. Um, one of the uh, issues early on when it was decided to go with the property related fee instead of an assessment was whether or not um, you could um, create a sliding scale factor that had to do with the amount of impact to water quality and the size of the lot. Um, our consultant thought not, and that was another reason for going with property related fee. Although we had in the past, when we had the ability, we had established a, a benefit assessment for the purposes of water quality. So to answer your question, um, I, you would pay more if, uh, the way I understand it is you would pay more if you were a larger parcel under an assessment um, scenario. So. Um is the answer to the question you're not sure yet whether it would whether it would require a, a, a lesser payment or a greater payment from the present system? Oh, this present system is flat rate. Everybody's mm -hmm. 2480. I thought your question was if it were an assessment, would there be a heavier charge? Mm -hmm. If there were an assessment, it's my understanding there would be a heavier charge the way mm -hmm. the benefit assessment works now. So it would be based on the lot size, would be determine how much your assessment is? And the intensity of use 
for example, large lots of, of agricultural are exempt, but large commercial lots are heavily charged under current benefit assessment. And that would change? Under the property related fee, everybody pays the same. Okay, so um, the, if I understand it correctly, is this new um, everybody gets one vote would also be everyone pays that same fee? That's correct. Whereas presently it's related to the square footage or size of parcel? Yes, the benefit assessment we currently have in place is related to the size of parcel and okay. the intensity of use. So it would also not only do this, uh, everyone that gets one vote, it would also shift the burden of who pays for the improvement than what is the current system where it's based on the amount of square footage. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I haven't seen any analysis or anything, but do you have an idea of um, what properties would all of a sudden not be paying as much money in this kind in this kind of system, for example, like public entities, they probably own a lot of um, waterway uh, areas that uh, are affected by MPDES. Would that be shifting the burden from public to private owners, do you think, because the public entity owns potentially more land in the areas? I, I would like to see some kind of analysis. And I guess this you're going to, the, the question here is to, bring it to the state and see if we can get some legislation change. I would like to see some more analysis on this as to who ends up paying a greater share of the uh, improvements than what our current system is, as well as my concern about the um, uh, the fact that it, uh, it, it, it is no longer a, a weighted average. Thank you. If, if I might, well, Supervisor Michaels, go ahead. We'll have to be to speak. A couple things. First, um, what I received in the mail said $18.90 additional. So I don't know where that came from. Um, and secondly, you know, it appears to me that the cities can raise fees and, and charges, service fees, et cetera, uh, especially if they run their own sanitation systems. Uh, so I question whether this is shifting who's going to be asking the voters away from the cities at, and into the county. Uh, and, and thirdly, beyond, you know, I just don't feel like this is soup yet. I really need to see an analysis. How many fees is each property currently paying to watershed protection? And is this additive, um, you know, Etc. And because the way that what I read that I received said an additional eighteen dollars and ninety cents, and I just I don't have enough analysis here to and to to really feel um, like I can support it. Also, I would like a discussion of why the cities can't raise their own fees if they're having trouble paying for the MPDS services. Uh, and, and I think that analysis is, is critical. So we can postpone this if everybody wants to. If no, if everybody else is ready to go ahead, then I, I can't support it without that information. A question. Um, this is asking us to uh, amend our legislative agenda so that we can move ahead and ask for the legislation. And there really is a timeline on that. As of February 28th is when the legislation has to be permitted or put forward. forward. So. Um, and the MPDES, we are, uh, with agreement of the cities, the regional coordinator of the MPDES permit. So that's probably why they're saying, would you, the county, you know, look at this additional tool to provide. That's one reason they're saying it. Well, I know that's one reason. <laughs> and, and I would say in response to that, too, if we move ahead to, to add this to our legislative agenda, which gives us the tool to do this, it doesn't say we're going to do it or we're mandated to do it, that the next step, I would say, in addition to all the analysis that's been requested, would, that we would get from the cities their commitment. Um, in the way of resolutions that say, you know, they would support whatever measure would go forward to the voters because they need 
these uh, additional tool to address the the what I believe is the public's goal and the whole cleanup of the water quality issues. So we're kind of in a you know rock and hard place or you know chicken and egg as to what comes first here. But I think what is before us is just the ability to give us a a tool to look at uh, an additional opportunity to clean up the water quality. So. Just one more comment. One more comment. I, I think Flint. your point is, is really a good one. But finally, we need to deal with this contamination. That's really, it's out there now in the ocean. Could I make an amendment to the motion folding in the questions that we have? Sounds like the motion's going to pass. Well, I think that I don't, I, okay. I, I'm sure you can. I'm not sure that it's needed in the sense that before this can, would come back to us for any um, action on moving ahead with this um, uh, tool, that all that information and questions and analysis and all obviously would be done. Staff wouldn't be foolish to come forward if it weren't done. But if you wish to make, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I second. Okay. There's a motion, a second to adopt the um, recommended action. So y you wish to make a amendment to that too? But yeah, just that we include the issues that were raised, which I see as the the issue of the lower threshold to get the yes vote. Uh, what? possible shifts in the cost from public to private this may cause. Um, what's the impact of to, to the residents in terms of total fee? Is it an increase? And can cities do this, or does it really need to be the county that does it? So those are the questions that I heard raised. So, so you're asking that we just, that staff provide us with the answers to those yes. questions? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Madam Chair, it appears to me that if this is merely to amend the legislative agenda, um, the comment that this is just a tool and we can, it says, on the next hand, you said, well, we're running out of time to introduce legislation. And therefore, it appears to me that this is an absolute intent to move forward and to move forward now. And uh, first of all, I would think it would be very difficult to find someone to sponsor this, given that the board is not wholly supportive. I believe we had one of those incidences not long ago, sir, uh, where w it was a very uncomfortable situation for that legislator. And so, um, you know, I, I can't support it because to me it's saying that we're going to amend the, the agenda in order to go try to find a sponsor to move this bill this session. So uh, to me, uh, it just isn't perhaps the most honest approach, so I'm not going to support it. Okay. Okay. No second on the motion. So there's a motion, a second to... Uh, there's no okay. second on what motion. There wasn't a second on the amendment motion. Oh, well, I, I, I was just waiting for... I, oh, okay. I, I, don't mind, I, don't, I don't mind those questions being answered. Um, I just, it just... It almost feels like a separate kind of motion. You know, hey, have staff come back with, with, with those questions. Because if, 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 if you wouldn't mind, let me, add, let me add one other thing that I would... Uh, that I think would be appropriate is, is and if we could do it in, in years, besides getting the answers to those questions, we also send staff a message from the Board of Supervisors that we want to make sure our staff communicates to the cities that if this legislation does go forward and if we do have the ability to do this, we're going to be asking the cities to officially go on record as being in favor of this. Mm -hmm. We're not interested in having the city say we're going to benefit and it's the Board of Supervisors that are going to pay the political price of putting it on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So um, if, if you're comfortable, Supervisor Parks, I'd be willing to roll that direction to staff along with the direction to answer your four questions as a separate motion after this, if that works for you. I, think I that's would support better. a separate motion. Okay. okay. Right. Otherwise, it's going to confuse the whole I would thing. It the sounds amendment. like okay. we've already blinked if we put all those questions in. <laughs> all right. We have a motion uh, and a second to amend our legislative platform. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tony, you can't vote on this one. Right. The motion maker says aye. Supervisor oh. Parks? Okay. No. no, no. So it passes 3-2 to amend the legislative platform. And I'd like to uh, go ahead and move that we uh, get staff to come back with some uh, answers, some questions that were raised today, including uh, the issue of the lower threshold in order to, to get a yes vote, the shift of cost from public to private, the potential for that. Um, what will the impact be in total fees to residents? with what you're proposing, and can cities uh, do this on their own, or does it require the county to do it? 
And then I think Supervisor Bennett also had uh, something he'd like to throw in. Well, just, just to direct staff to let the cities know that we will be requesting that they uh, pass resolutions in support of this if, in fact, we, we get the legislation out of the legislature after our overwhelmingly strong support, three mm -hmm. to two support for it. And that, that would and be out of the city councils to get uh, that kind that, of resolution? Yeah, that we'll be asking okay. the city councils for those resolutions. I'll tell you that in a motion, too. Um, and um, that we'll, so just, just let them know that we'll be asking for those. So that, <coughs> I just make one more point. There's a motion and a second on that, but go ahead, Mr. Clark. Yeah, we, we need to do a bit better job of uh, explaining this to the public um, of contamination and, and have maybe a session on that so that we get some uh, we get some shared knowledge here with the public. Most of the questions on the uh, questionnaire, by the way, had nothing to do with MPDES. Okay, there's a motion and a second uh, giving direction to staff. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any objection? Seeing none. Thank you. There you go. Get Good well, luck. Mr. Pratt. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Sorry to put you through that when you didn't feel well. Good to see you, though. I think. Okay, well, that 10 o'clock was all kind of like challenged. Supervisor Long, could we move yes. that item yeah. up so Mr. We will um, move to item 22 at this time in our 10 o'clock, we'll, we'll, and, and 21 will follow that so that we can uh, present a resolution honoring Assemblyman Tony Strickland for his years of service to our county, Supervisor Michaels. Yes, thank you. Uh, we had a few chuckles um, during that little incident <laughs> board item. Uh, Probably appropriate that the assemblyman, uh, former assemblyman, is uh, here in the audience joining us. Uh, let me preface what I'm going to say by I never did support term limits. I still don't support term limits. I think that uh, voters should take responsibility for choosing and maintaining those uh, that they would like to see in office and who have done good work, and if they haven't, kick them out. Uh, so having said that, the reason that we are now honoring former Assemblyman Tony Strickland is that he did term out uh, and ha he has done a tremendous amount of work in his years as Assemblyman and I think it's unfortunate that we had to give that up. Uh, Tony and I didn't, don't always see eye to eye much like any of us in this job don't always see 100 percent eye to eye, but Tony has always been um, extremely helpful. He's been available and accessible, and when there was something that was needed and wanted, uh, he has helped carry that for us. Uh, one time it was a little embarrassing, as I alluded to before, but we got through that. Uh, let me read just some of the information on, on Tony's um, tenure as an assemblyman, and then I'll ask him to come down here and say a few words and accept his resolution. Uh, unfortunately, he's a little more shy. I didn't ever know you were shy. Uh, and didn't want the big video because I was really looking forward to doing that video. There's, there would have been some great clips in there. Um, in 1998, Tony Strickland served three terms. Starting in 1998, he has ter served his three terms in the California State Assembly, championing educational reform, public safety, lower taxes, and the elimination of government waste, as he, during those years, honorably represented the 37th District. Tony served as chair of the Republican Caucus, as Republican Whip, vice chair of, governmental organi of the governmental organization. I can't read with this glare. Um, I'm going to solve this problem. See, I can do that. Okay. <laughs> and served on arts, entertainment, sports, tourism, and internet media committees. Tony's le legislative priorities and highlights include proposals to eliminate the double tax on gasoline, provide merit pay to teachers whose students improve their academic performance, I agree with that one, increase senior homeowner property tax exemption, and also authored a state law that would prohibit registered sex offenders from being paroled within one quarter mile of an elementary school. In 01, Tony served, pardon me, sued Governor Gray Davis in court and won. 
Forcing the governor to reveal how much the state was spending for increased electricity while introducing a bill which was signed into law authorizing the creation of the Ronald Reagan commemorative license plate. ACR 135. <coughs> With that, Tony established stretches of State Route 1, State Route 126, as Ventura Count County's Veterans Memorial Highway and Korean Veterans Memorial Highway, respectively. Uh, State, one, State Route 101, one section was, and this one I love, was uh, designated Screaming Eagles Highway in honor of the 101st Airborne Division. Tony... Uh, helped us rename our flood control district to Ventura County Watershed Protection District with AB 2320. Uh, and I think that was, that was one of the ones that was kind of a lot of fun for Tony. He got to play around with a name. Um, Tony is still a very active member in our community as a member of the Board of Ventura County Council of Boy Scouts of America, Advisory Committee Member for Food Share, and an honorary board member of the Moore Park Boys and Girls Club. I'm soon to be a member of their board of directors. Uh, and I lost my place. And is the current president of the California Club for Growth, an anti-tax supply-side economic political adv advocacy group. So with all of that, are you tired, Tony? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so maybe term limits isn't such a bad thing? You can rest now. <laughs> anyway, in all seriousness and, and truly in honor of Tony and the work that he did while he was in the assembly, be it therefore resolved that the Board of Supervisors of the County of Ventura thank and commend Assemblyman Tony Strickland for his six years of honorable service to the County of Ventura and the 37th Assembly District and further wish the Assemblyman the best of luck with future endeavors. I'm sure that uh, he will be around and I would ask the board for a motion to pass and adopt that this resolution this day. Second. Okay, Mo I have a motion and a second. Uh, we have no a motion objection. and a second and no the board has order. said this has been ordered. So Tony, would you please come down and allow us to honor you? <laughs> and say a few words while I'm on my way down. Well, first of all, I want to thank all of you. Um, you know, working with each and every one of you, get to see you in action is uh, <laughs> is quite a pleasure for me because uh, I was up in Sacramento Monday through Thursday when I was up there. I got to you know read about and see a lot of things that you were doing here at the county level. But uh, I have a unique relationship with each and every one of you, and uh, I wish you all the luck in the in the world um, to serve the people of Ventura County. We live in, I believe the best county in the United States. Uh, everybody wants to live in California, and people want, who come to California want to live in Ventura County. And it's because of hard work that one thing I took, we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. Um, not a lot of things, but we don't see eye, a few things. But uh, one thing's for sure that I always took pride in working with the local government with, uh, because when you ask <coughs> citizens uh, what are their priorities in government, it was always uh, the local government that was at the top of their agenda. and. Uh, us in the state, we like to work with uh, the local city councils and the county boards of supervisors. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention Christine Cohen and Dan Goodwin and Larry Matheny, who also worked very uh, aggressively with my office to serve the people of Ventura County. And I'm looking forward to serving the people of Ventura County on a private uh, capacity. And uh, now it's, it's nice to get this resolution because now I'm only known as Audra's husband. And so... Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, term limits, I, I'm termed out and retired at age of 34, but uh, I, I think uh, I will be very active in the private sector, and, and um, I'm looking forward to working e with each and every one of you to make Ventura County uh, that great place that everybody moves here for. So thank you. You're only termed out one office. Yeah. you got a whole bunch more you can now work for. What he didn't want to say about not seeing eye to eye his former boss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I also just want to wish you best of luck in your future endeavors, Tony. Um, it's hard to believe that you could be retired already, so I'm, I'm sure you'll be back in public office soon, and I wish you best of luck. 
Thank you, sir. Tony, we have to remember that it was a Republican who led the term limit issue. <laughs> Pete Shabaram, former supervisor of L.A. County. But you've been a wonderful person to work with. And uh, the, the service you gave to Oxnard and how you uh, identified with Oxnard. Tony uh, took part, for example, in the uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday celebration when we honored his work. And there was Tony always with that. So we thank you for your uh, sensitivity and you're such a nice guy to work with. And not too shabby as a basketball player. Are you still playing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Take care. Enjoy your life as Audra's husband. Thank you. <laughs> okay, board members, it is 10, almost 10.30. Shall we keep cooking through here? Yeah. Okay. At least with the time certain. Uh, we need what? Item 21. Oh, yeah, that's right. We had to go back to 21. I'm so sorry. Um, approval of revised fee schedule for processing of carry concealed weapon permits. Sheriff Brooks, you're not Sheriff Brooks. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy, good to see you and welcome. Yes. Kathy Kip. Chair Long, Kathy. Board of Supervisors, Kemp. Mr. Johnson. <laughs> I'll, I'll cover for the sheriff. Okay. Um, this item before you is regarding our uh, fees we collect on the carrying concealed weapons. We have not raised those fees since 1980, and in reviewing our costs, uh, the legislature does allow us to collect um, our costs incurred. Unfortunately, they cap it at $100, and our costs are probably around $347 a piece. But this is bringing it forward to you that asks that at least you approve these fees that make them um, much, that it better um, reflects our costs of what it costs to pro process these things. If you have any questions, I can ask any additional questions. Supervisor Parks? No, uh, no question. I just uh, congratulations on your recent promotion. Thank you. Um, and then also, uh, you know, certainly we'll support the motion. And I think part of our legislative platform is looking that we can recover the fees for the amount of work that we are doing in providing these. So um, I would hope that, you know, we do get uh, eventually uh, a full ability to get uh, the, the costs that are incurred from those who need a uh, concealed weapon. So I'll move the motion. Second. So motion and a second. The objection to the motion. Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Now we'll go to item 35, approval of a contract amendment with Versatech. Mr. Carroll, welcome. Morning, Chair Long, members of the board, Mr. Johnson, Matt Carroll, Chief Information Officer. I'm here on behalf of the uh, VCHRP Steering Committee once again, and we're requesting your board approve uh, our final investment in the VCHRP project. That's an amendment in the amount of $1.35 million with Verachi Tech uh, Incorporated. Verachi Tech. Yes, okay. I can. This is probably the first time I hope I've said it right, right Mike. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and that will fund uh, phase two, which we refer to as the icing on the cake for the payroll project, uh, employee self-service, workflow, e-learning, uh, additional department in hot, our, uh, inquiry capabilities, as well as some uh, other modifications to the system uh, uh, that will bring us to a completion in the third quarter of this year. Uh, these costs are within the original approved project budget, and I'm here to answer any questions your board may have at this time. Other questions? Just a comment. Um, my compliments for keeping this project uh, within the original estimates. Mm -hmm. Not easy to do with these uh, tech projects. I've been associated with some organizations that have had terrible overruns uh, when they've gone here. So my compliments. That wasn't uh, uh, wasn't something that I think everybody expected. And you've done a great job with this project from a cost management standpoint. Thank you. We'll take that back to the team. Yeah. Just just a quick comment. Um, in support of the project and the team. Um, you know, some people question, they say, well, you know, there's still a little glitch here and a little glitch there. Um, I have those in my computer every day, and I can't explain why. Uh, and I didn't install a multi-million dollar, multi-faceted program and get it up and running. Uh, so to, to those who are kind of naysayers about this project, and, and there are a few, um, I believe that the team rolled this out with the barest of minimum problems. And I find it extremely um, gratifying and somewhat surprising uh, because projects, like Supervisor Bennett said, projects of this size often are not 
um, easy to accomplish, definitely not on time and on budget. So I think that Matt and the team deserve a lot of praise for the work that they've done and to those who are out there kind of complaining about the system. Um, valid comments. There are still some issues. Everybody understands that. We will work through those issues and we will get it done. So thank you. Before I move the recommended action, uh, the only other thing I want to point out is if you came in $5 million over budget, there would be a very nice story about that, but there's not normally going to be a story about coming in under budget. I'd like to move the recommended action. It's a motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. And yes, thank you. Excellent job. Farachi Tech, thank you. All right. Uh, <laughs> just one comment. Supervisor Parks, I didn't realize you were a fellow Cal parent. Mr. Reed and I both are. Go Bears. <laughs> Thank you. Um, board members, the next item is mine. It's item 36. It's policy matter, and it's asking you to adopt the resolution to cast our county's ballot in favor of the Creditors Committee Plan of Reorganization for Santa Paula Memorial Hospital bankruptcy proceedings and also a request that we call on all the creditors who are a part of this long process to vote yes on the plan, affirmative vote, and to vote expeditiously. The board letter, I hope you did receive it in time to review it in addition to the proposed resolution, is pretty self-explanatory. You've all been just tremendously um, engaged and, and helpful in the process of, of the um, Santa Paula Memorial Hospital. Uh, this is one of those milestones that um, before the bankruptcy judge uh, last week, clearly in her uh, acceptance of the, of the plan as presented uh, and setting the uh, timeline for the creditors to take action and the um, plan to, to be finalized in a vote that would be brought back to the court on April 6th was a significant milestone. Um, today is another one for us as a board that speaks loudly, I think, in support of the Santa Clara Valley, the over 60,000 residents there who will benefit from our excellent hospital system, our excellent health care system that will umbrella over Santa Paula and Santa Clara Valley um, with the affirmative vote and, of course, with the court's then affirmative vote on April 6th to reorganize um, the debt structure of Santa Paula Memorial Hospital. And as I, as I noted in the letter to you, um, commending the team, and you know who the team's been, the negotiating team, it's certainly um, Dr. Duran, Dr. Edwards, Karen Davis, Kirk Watson, Mike Powers, Noel Klebaum, Dave Henninger, and probably many others around those leaders who have helped to keep the pieces together and keep this moving forward. And, and it has been tremendous work on their behalf. The community is, is um, um, solidly behind the reorganization plan. The city of Santa Paula leadership has been outstanding. Um, and we feel very confident that um, this is a solid plan for the public. It's a solid investment for our system. And I certainly ask for your positive vote on the county's ballot in favor of the reorganization. Second That's motion. my motion. Second. Motion a second. And you left off another name in that list, and that's yourself. And I just really, uh, I, I laud you for so you this. Can have one of you too. As I said, I, I just couldn't believe that we were able to do this. And I'm yeah. just, it really took someone with vision and, and continually pushing forward as the members of the team did. And I just really have a, a lot of respect for this because, I, I, as I said, I thought it would never happen. So yeah. I, I'm glad to see it move forward. Thank you. Motion and a second. I'm, any objection to the motion? Seeing none. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you, team. We ought to, we ought to uh, probably L.A. County be kind of ashamed of what they're doing as opposed to what we're doing. We are. We are a model. We absolutely are. And we're still in good, strong position here. So thank you so much for that vote. Appreciate it. And thank you, team. Um, recommendation of Supervisor Parks to appoint Lee Riggin to the Commission for Women, item 37. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. I'll make the motion. And uh, this was, came with a, a recommendation by the, uh, the head of the board there that would really like to see her on. And uh, it's good enough for me. And I know she has uh, some great credentials. Motion is second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered.
I'd take a item thirty eight. Whip through the rest. Of oh, we only got three more. Yeah, we only have three more items, so let's I cook them one out here. <laughs> um, I, I, let me ask real quick, Mr. Mr. Johnson, did you do anything on lunch? Shall we? Do you all want to go out and get a breath of fresh air for lunch, or you want lunch and work through with all our other items? Work, 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 work. Well, our closed session will take quite a, quite a while. while. Lunch. 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 Excuse me, but priorities here. Lunch. Yeah. We have to have lunch ordered. So, all right. Otherwise, I'm sorry, you, Don. I'm so sorry. You'd, you'd think that staff would just automatically do that to protect themselves from yeah. us when we get hungry. <laughs> Especially this guy right here. We get snarly. <laughs> Lunch has been ordered. Okay. Cool. Good. Okay. Oh, okay, back to business. Now we can get back to him. <laughs> <laughs> Probation agency. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair, fellow board members, uh, CEO Johnson. Uh, the probation agency today is asking that you approve receipt of a congressional appropriation from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration for the current fiscal year. Uh, in the amount of $497,050 to continue the operation of our Juvenile Delinquency Mental Health Court, which is a collaborative effort along with Behavioral Health, DA, Public Defender. Uh, we have expanded to include uh, Mary Samples from our SELPA, which is a special education uh, local planning area because so many of these clients have special ed needs as well. Uh, and this is under the direction of uh, Judge Back. Uh, and we're also requesting that you roll over some unused appropriation from the prior fiscal year into this year. Uh, we want to expand the program by adding an additional probation officer and psychiatric social worker. <coughs> we're currently serving 15 clients, and they would like to expand it to be able to serve 30 to 35. And I would... Uh, like to say personally, uh, being involved in this from the start, when Sue Hughes from the CEO's office called and said, we think you guys have some unmet needs in probation. Would you like some extra money and how would you spend it? And we came up with this concept. Uh, it's about the third mental health court in the state for juvenile offenders. Uh, we think it's working very well. We're pleased with the progress. We're keeping almost all of these kids out of custody and in the home where they're receiving treatment. And uh, we feel it's a great effort. And looking down the road, when the appropriations run out from the federal government, if they do, we're hoping that we will continue this locally. It's a good effort. Well, it's treating a, uh, what we call a criminal problem with a, as a health problem, right? Yes. That's a big step, and I congratulate the probation department for that. Well, thank you, Supervisor Flynn. It's very exciting. I don't go to all the team meetings, but I try to sit in on about one a month and to see the collaboration and everybody dropping roles and just strictly addressing what's going on here and how can we try to fix it. That's it's what makes very it work. refreshing. Yeah. Comments? Questions? The, um, just, just a comment. You know, we... We talk a lot about public safety here um, uh, in this boardroom. I know there have been some some uh, very dramatic, emotional presentations. I know one time during a budget hearing, there was a picture of Charlie Manson up there, uh, you know, as the board was voting. And um, we're going from 15 youth to up to 35 youth that could be uh, served. And uh, none of us will ever know how much good is being done. You only know, you only know when you fail. Mm -hmm. But um, I, th I think it's important for the public to realize that public safety, um, you know, reaching uh, emotionally disturbed youth might be one of the most valuable things that we can do from a public safety standpoint. And uh, so I applaud you for doing this and, and hope that it helps us all uh, broaden our vision about what we need to do to make sure that uh, not only are these individuals served appropriately, but that uh, we all are. Uh, we all. We all have the the proper investments uh, for public safety that we need to make. So, mm -hmm. thanks a lot for doing this. Thank you, Supervisor Bennett. Any comments or questions? And the motion. Move. Move. Second. Motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Mr. Johnson, did you have a comment, sir? I, I just wanted to echo Don's comments about the collaboration that. 
the difficulty we've had in funding, you know, funding streams being cut off, funding streams being undependable, uh, the cooperation from our behavioral health department, uh, Linda Shulman and her people with Cal, Don, uh, people in our legislative office, the, the courts. Uh, when you don't have a lot of resources, it's all the more important that we all work together to get the best out of what we have, and I think this is a good example of, of a success. <laughs> Absolutely true. One of the, the things we complain about often is that there's that silo funding stream that's so hard to bridge. But I think in our county we do an excellent job because we appreciate and work and strive towards collaboration and communication and cooperation, and it, it does work. I particularly like the, speaking of, of the public safety um, uh, crossing the generations, um, the recent... Um, uh, ads I've seen on television that, that goes back to um, use of funds for um, uh, First Five, uh, talking about um, getting children in preschool. And, and, you know, cradle to the grave, as it were, we have to look at how we must um, work together to make sure the community has the safety net they need to improve their lives, and probation does a great job. Thank so you. the motion second has been approved and adopted, and we thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, if I can just say also that uh, so much of uh, so much of the individual, uh, whether it's uh, through drugs or mental illness, and how much it is connected with uh, our uh, law enforcement, it just was a real surprise to me to see how many calls our, our sheriff deputies make on people who are suicidal or uh, through drug abuse or. or you know, uh, problems in the home that it's so much tied together that a lot of what we see out there in our in terms of criminals are people who are really drug addicted or have mental disability if we don't treat the whole individual we're not ever going to be able to stop the recidivism going back people going back to jail so this is a really good approach thank you okay board members that was 38 and we have we've handled 39 through 43, so we have 44 left on Move the regular agenda. Move to receive agenda. and file. Motion to receive and file. I'll second that, seeing no objection to it. So ordered. Um, so now that completes our agenda, except for our closed session uh, that we will go into, and we'll be back at 1.30 for a public hearing on a general plan amendment proposal. Is that correct? Ms. Clerk, that we finish that? Okay. Closed session. Do we expect any announcements out of closed session? It is possible there may be an announcement. Ooh. Ooh, intrigue. Wow. How exciting. All right, we'll go back to closed session. And lunch. That would be and the we'll first be back time.
Okay, um, we are back to order. There was not or will not be an announcement out of closed session, and we will move right to our 130 time certain item, which is a general plan amendment screening. Uh, I'm sorry. Staff report. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. You can hear back there. Okay. Mr. Smith. Yes, good afternoon, members of the board. I'm uh, Bruce Smith, and I'm standing in for Tricia Meyer, who unfortunately is ill today. And uh, I'll try to make this as brief and cogent as possible. There she comes. Uh, this is uh, one of two um, hearings this year for general plan amendment screenings. As far as this particular screening is concerned, we have one application before your board. It's an application filed by Martin Gramkow and um, is represented by Lisa Wood Woodburn of Jensen Design and Survey. The uh, subject property, as you will see on Exhibit 2, to my left, your right, um, shows the subject property. Uh, the su subject property uh, involves uh, 28.07 acres in area. As soon as I can get the, oops. Which one do I have to do with now to get back to that? One to show the cursor. Help. <laughs> Help. <laughs> That's why I have staff people for this, right? There we go. Okay. Well, the, the subject property, the 28-acre parcel is, is outlined in the yellow and black hash marks. And... Uh, the applicant is requesting that 11.01 acres of that area, of that parcel, be redesignated from General Plan Amendment designation of uh, OS 40 to OS 10 and be rezoned accordingly. The purpose is to create the 11.01 acre por uh, parcel, uh, which would be more in keeping with the local topography and the features that, that actually are present on the property. The remainder of the parcel is proposed to be combined with the parcel immediately to the west, which is parcel A. And then um, by so being combined, the applicant then subsequently wishes to subdivide uh, one parcel off at meeting the 40-acre minimum parcel size requirement. The total number of parcels by this proposal would be the same as that which exists under the current general plan. The property to the east is zoned for rural and as part of Rancho Matillaha. We've looked at the uh, board's screening criteria. We found no reasons uh, for or found no uh, violations of the screening gui guidelines. And we believe that this would be good transitional zoning and general plan designations between the larger open space areas and the Rancho Matillaha project. With that, I won't belabor the point. I'll just basically answer any questions that your board may have. Thank you. Are there questions? I just It's not a question. I just want to confirm and, and point out. Um, obviously, I, I have some requests for us to actually upgrade uh, open space zoning from 10 acres to 20 acres uh, out there in terms of general plans. So I'm always uh, – uh, sensitive when somebody wants to do a down zoning here like this one, uh, uh, but at the same time, there's some unique things about this that make common sense. I think in terms of it actually supporting the ag operation that is there, uh, and the the thing I just want to clarify is on page three of the staff report, second paragraph there, the last sentence. It says granting of the GPA and zone change would create a conforming lot with a potential subdivide, but would result in no net increases in potential dwelling units in the Ohio Valley. And this one confirm that's correct because that's 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 the kicker for me is this is not this is not down zoning so that you can create you know 10 10 acre you know lots that you can do this yeah up zoning thank you right so uh, uh, it's just creates a more rational and it and I don't know if you've had time to do it but creates a more rational allows the farming operation to have the, the farm equipment and all of that hooked up with it uh, more appropriately so just want to confirm that, and I'm ready for the. Are there any other questions at this time of staff? 
one clarification I would like to make on that score. Uh, as Mr. Uh, as Supervisor Bennett has uh, pointed out, the board has asked us to evaluate and, and bring back to your board an amendment to the general plan for consideration of, of increasing the minimum parcel size and open space from 10 to 20. That is not final decision by your board. There are other options your board may want to consider at that time, one of which would be even to exempt this particular application as an application being in the pipeline, or you may want to consider other options with that. Uh, for instance, um, having that policy not apply to open space within an area plan boundary. But there are several options that your board aren't, is not prepared to deal with today, but we would uh, make sure that your board is aware of in terms of the effects it would have on this application at that time. Okay. Okay, thank you. And again, this is a general plan screening process, general plan amendment screening process. It's uh, not a project proposed to us, and I appreciate staff's report. I have one card submitted from Lisa Woodburn. Um, please. Hello. I'm Lisa Hi, Woodburn. Lisa. I'm with Jensen Design and Survey, and we're located at 4171 Market Street here in Ventura. I'm here representing the applicant, Martin Gramkow. Martin owns the 28-acre piece of property. Um, his brother, Jurgen, is also here. They're both here today, and Jurgen owns the 203-acre piece. Um, Martin's is the only one involved in the general plan amendment screening, but both pieces of property are part of this project. Um, I do have a short PowerPoint presentation prepared that we could go through, or if you would like, I could just be here to answer any questions. We're, you know, I, I, I'm here at your okay. desire. Okay. Pleasure of the board. Any questions? Any need to see further information? I'm not seeing a yes on that, so. Okay. All right. Thank you very Thank much. you. Um, I'd just like to make this comment. I appreciate uh, Mr. Smith's pointing out that we have some other stuff coming down the road. Um, since the applicant's here and, and uh, the issue's been raised about, you know, what would happen if we make the other changes, um, I think consistently, at least since I've been on the board, we have uh, things that were in the pipeline. We allowed people made decisions going into the mm -hmm. into a process. We didn't change the rules on them in the middle of the pipeline. That's not a board action right now, so that's not anything but for the applicants to hear. That's what the board's policy has been in the past, and um, the uh, with with regard to this, and I think it would, it would uh, most likely apply uh, in this situation also. So I'd move the staff uh, move the recommended action. Motion and a second. Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. The board's business is complete for the day. For the moment. The first Nine minutes. It's the first Ohio project like that today.